My name is Betty Hoadley, and I've been hanging around Concord for quite a few years. Some of you know me from school. Some of you know from me from the school board. Some of you know me from watching attendance and, and attending athletic events, but I did all of them with gusto. Uh, today, I am here to advertise a book, and the book is called the story of Ed Edwina Joukowsky building Project C. Project C means S-E-E, -E, School Environmental Education, not the letter C as in cat. Back in very early January, Edwina passed away, and I was so shocked and so saddened. And I got thinking about it. I just thought to myself, you know, we really ought to do a book about her because there's so much to tell, so much to tell. But the thing that was always clear is that when you wait too long to write a history of something, you lose something. You lose people. You lose the personal touch. You lose the people who were there, the people who made the decisions, the people who could tell you why the decisions were made. And that's a terrible thing to lose because the histories that are written are not going to be rich enough, full enough, complete enough. The reception that we got in the community was huge, just huge. Everybody wanted to help. Everybody loved Edwina. Everybody wanted to help. What can I help? What can I do? What can I give you? Would you believe the first person I called was Kathy Mitchell, who used to teach at the former Kimmel School. And she and I had been colleagues there in grades five and six for a long time. Well, I called Kathy. I hadn't seen her for 25 years, and I know how long it was because I know when I retired and saw her last. So I called Kathy, and I asked her if she was interested in helping. Well, she said, oh, yes, I'd, I'd love to do that. One of the ones that we came up with was Luann Pigeon, and Luann was the most recent director of Project C. So she had uh, access to all the files that were there about Project C. My name is Luann Pigeon, like the bird, is what I always told my students in case there was any concern. Um, I started with Project C in 1994. It was my first teaching job. I'd just gotten my certification and um, I'd seen the advertisement in the paper and thought, my word, this sounds like my job, the job I'd always want to have. So um, I interviewed for it and I was anticipating um, a call back from another school when Edwina called me and said, we want you. And that was such a delight for me. The program itself was so different from anything that I'd ever seen in a school before. And this seemed to bring together the idea of learning and being part of the world around you. So um, I was so impressed with all of Edwin's lessons. They were timely. I mean, they really met children at the level that they were at. And they were also... Um, timeless. They weren't just for kids from the 80s and 90s, but was still apropos for the 90s and 2000s when I began. Incidentally, at Montreal, like they usually did, Edwina took kids who had studied hawk watching in their classrooms and had actually done it. So they had the kids put on a display. Well, the people were just blown away. These are children nine years old and they know all this, you know, and they was like, holy mackerel, how does this happen? Well, they got all kinds of kudos from those kinds of encounters. And they actually got an invitation to the next international one, guess where it was going to be held? Israel. No, they didn't go. But isn't that just mind-boggling that they were asked, and that's the kind of territory they were running in? We met up on Fisk, pa Fisk Road, and there were no houses up there then, just one. And we looked out to the southwest, 
where Cohotec was supposed to come in. And the time was probably like 4.30 or 5. Can you imagine getting kids and their parents out there on, on Fisk Road? And we look out, and, and guess what? The clouds rolled in. Just at the time the Cohotec was supposed to be visible, we were shattered, absolutely shattered. Edwina to the rescue. Okay, we're going to drive over to White Farm now and have breakfast. Well, the minute she said breakfast, <laughs> I think they sort of forgot about Cohotec for a few minutes. And we went over there and we had hot cocoa and hot cereal and toast and fruit. And, and the day was saved. Then another one from Kimball School was oceanography. And the place we chose to have the field trip was uh, uh, over in Rye. And we went there to a newly set up uh, science center. So the outfit of the day was short pants or roll up your pants, uh, bring a pail, and we went in and we looked for sea snails, sea crabs, sea anemones, sea worms, anything that we could find in the tide pools. And we have one boy, there's a picture of it in here, who took a note and put it in a bottle and, and sealed it up. And he went out on the jetty and threw it out. And we all thought, oh, good, we're going to hear from somebody in Africa or Portugal or England or somewhere. Well, about three weeks later, we had a note. And in it was the, uh, the name of the person who had found the bottle and his address. Guess where he lived? Rye, New Hampshire. <laughs> what happened was we were in sort of a, an enclosed area. And you needed to be way out further in order to cast a bottle that was going to go across the Atlantic Ocean. We thought that it was possible, but it wasn't the way we did it. However, we got a lot of laughs out of that. I really enjoyed working with her. She was so well read and would, I, I, I think she read like two or three newspapers and several different subscriptions to a variety of uh, organizations and always trying to bring that learning in. She was um, an amazing person and fun, it was always fun. Uh, we'd sit at lunchtime and talk about how we could bring these huge ideas to kids in a simple way that they could um, you know, make their own and learn from. Uh, and she was, she had a kindness about her. Um, we always prepared for children. I, I loved the way she decorated the cottage. It was, oh, there was a theme. There was sometimes a color theme uh, with backyard birds in the first grade. They were, there was the red cardinal. So all the letters were red and it was all about birds. Um, and uh, she would say to the kids, if you watch the birds, you'll always have wonder and beauty in your life. Well, you know, how can you argue with that? And then, the, the last uh, activity that I did with Edwina was called Unplugged. And by this time, I had gotten smarter and I was teaching at uh, junior high instead of at elementary school. And the idea was that the class, and I was either a seventh or an eighth grade class, that uh, was going to spend the entire day out beside the Turkey River. There was no pandemic, but they were all separated so they couldn't talk and play cards and fool around. And they agreed to it. Can you imagine it? They agreed to it? And incidentally, when I say Turkey River, I think you should say Turkey Brook, because it's only a, you know, pretty small. Certainly nothing like the Merrimack. Anyway, <clears throat> we spent a whole day of class prior to this to see what you could bring. And the first and, and ultimate rule was no talking. You could bring a sleeping bag, you could bring your lunch, you could bring uh, needles and uh, yarn, you could bring a, a word game, you could bring something, a wind-up toy. You couldn't bring, well, we didn't have telephones, mobile phones then anyway, but you couldn't bring things that needed electricity. Now, I know you're going to ask me, what would you do about toilets? 
I don't remember, but we took care of it. And so anyway, I would go around from student to student, and we had a prearranged uh, signal. I didn't know anything about sign language, but we developed our own. And, uh, and I would walk up and I would ask them in sign language, how were they doing? And then, is there anything they wanted to show me or, or tell me? And they had to do it, again, by sign language or even writing on their hand. But I'll tell you, the prize of the day, I got over to one young man who I think was a little younger than most and, and, and really struggled a bit in school. But I'll tell you, what he had done just left me amazed. He had brought little uh, milk cartons from junior high, and he had twigs, and he would make a mast, and then he had sails out of leaves, and he had some string, and he's down there by a little water's edge, and he's blowing and blowing and blowing on these things. I thought, he's going to get a headache. And what he was doing was he was having a race. He'd have two or three boats, and he was blowing on them to see who would win to the other side. Then he'd go over there, turn them around, and bring them back again. Uh, I, I think I learned more as, in preparing for some of these elementary lessons than I, I learned in my my years of college sometimes. Um, it was a, a broad picture. It wasn't just, um, I, I'm a biologist, but in elementary school, teachers are expected to have it all, um, and they would have to teach about earth science, life science, and physical science. Um, I, I don't think any elementary, you know, K to two teacher really goes into teaching with a full background of, of in those disciplines. So um, Project C, their, our job, I felt, was to enhance what teachers could um, work, you know, give to students. And Edwina always said that we, we want the same experience for every student in Concord. So it wasn't, if you were a, um, some of our teachers were really strong in science, you know, so if you had a really strong science teacher, well, you got a lot of science. But we wanted kids to be able to come and and have that science experience um, ac across the board. We did this wetland unit with third grade, and seeing stuff under the microscope and introducing these tiny cell-sized cell living things that probably kids, well, sometimes they'd leave thinking they'd never take a gulp of water again if they were in the lake, but we tried to help them understand that these don't live in the quantities like this. When Betty called me um, earlier this year uh, to work on this uh, booklet of Edwinner, I... I was really delighted to be able to uh, to help with that, and um, there's uh, there's a lot of good things in this book, um, memories that I think show how it would have really impacted um, students in the Concord School District. This book has been given to the Concord Public Library. They have a couple of copies that will that are circulating, and one for the. Uh, uh, Concord room and then uh, every school uh, elementary middle school high school has a copy of the book